Hey there, this lecture is the continuation uh, from the previous lecture. I had to cut that one short because it was getting way too long. And uh, so we're gonna, in this lecture, we're gonna continue on the topic of the query DSL. So let's move forward. So let me format this uh, syntax a bit so it's easier to uh, read. So inside of this must, we have these two match condition, conditions, right? And this must belongs inside of this bool. There's, just like we have must, there's also something called must not, okay? So let me show you what that looks like. And I'm just going to sort of uh, fix this. Let's just get rid of, uh, you know, that extra condition so we get more, more documents here. And instead of the computer course, let's just change this to accounting so we have more data to work with here. All right, and uh, let's run this to see what, what gets returned. We get a total of four documents that get returned. So similar to this, let me add uh, the other classroom. Uh, I'm going to say where room is, uh, let's pick a room here. This is E7, uh, this is E3, and this is also taught in, in room E3. So let me just say that room should be E3. And notice that I'm lo using lowercase because remember, the analyzer is going to turn everything that we send into uh, a lowercase, and uh, the documents that have been indexed are going to be indexed into lowercase. Uh, so it'll match properly. So let's hit play and notice that it's returning those two documents that are uh, containing the word accounting in the name field and the room uh, value is E3, okay? So these have two professors. There is a Thomas Bezos and there is also Bill Cage. So if I wanted to add another condition inside of the bool, we have this must condition. There's also something called must not. So let me do that here, must not. And then I could specify that a particular condition better not be true. So let me just copy this syntax to make it easier. Inside of this match, I can say that the, you know, for example, the name of the professor should not be uh, Bill Cage. So I could say professor dot name, right? Remember, this is a nested field inside of the professor object. So I could say professor dot name um, is uh, you know Bill for example. So I'm saying must not match this criteria. That's what this is showing. So let's hit play, and notice now the results. It's only showing one hit, and uh, notice that the only professor we got here is Thomas Bezos, and uh, the Bill uh, professor named Bill is uh, no longer being shown the uh, search result because of this must not criteria. So we've got must and must not, and they are both inside of this bool expression. So just like we have must and must not, there's also something called a should, okay? Um, and that just goes like this. And inside of this should clause, we specify what, you know, ideally what should be there, right? It doesn't have to, it's not necessary. It's not a must or must not. It's just a, it's just a should, meaning, you know, it, it would be nice to have. That's what should means, right? So I could say, you know, uh, let me just copy this to make my life easier. And the name for, the, for this course we can say is computer. So now we're saying the, it would be nice for documents to contain uh, the word computer in the course name, all right? So we're also, we'd like to see that. So let's hit play and notice that it didn't give us anything, okay? The reason is because this should does not take precedence over must and must not. It's pretty much almost always ignored by Elasticsearch. Unless we specify a special uh, field, we have to specify something called minimum should, minimum should match. And we specify one. And this means that the must and must not, it, you know, that better be true, but the should should uh, must also be true because we put this minimum should match equals one we're uh, enforcing the fact that the condition inside of the should better also be true and how many conditions better be true we're just saying one so one of the should conditions that are specified better be true that's what minimum should match uh, is so it turns the should into a sort of a must for one of the conditions that are specified in the should and we can have multiple shoulds in here. You know, I can, I can uh, put multiple shoulds in here. It doesn't really matter. And they could all be, you know, shoulding 
different types of uh, criteria, but minimum should match basically states that at least one of these better match, okay? So let's get rid of those extra shoulds. So minimum should here is saying that, hey, this, this is actually also very important. So let's hit play. And now, Malphorn, ah, I made a mistake. This minimum should match field should not be, um, you know, inside of, inside of this query. It should be actually inside of this bool clause, okay? So let's put a comma here and just put minimum should match equals one. And let's hit play and notice it didn't return a single document. It didn't return a single document, okay? And the reason for this is because we're, we're saying that the name of the course must be a computer here, right? This should is effectively become a must because we added this condition, minimum should match equals one. And we're also saying that the name of the course must, must also be accounting. So how is that possible? How can a course have the name accounting and then also the course name better be computer. That doesn't make sense. A course has a single name. So this is, of course, uh, you know, logically inaccurate. This is pretty much nonsensical if you really think about it, right? It would be the same thing if I was to take this out of the should and put it into the must, right? And we're saying now that the, uh, the name of the course is accounting. It better be accounting and the name of the course better be computer, right? This is not an or, okay? This is a must. This is saying that the name must be accounting, and it's saying that the name must be computer. So that's not even possible. Just to prove to you the point, if I just get rid of this should condition altogether um, and just run this as it is, notice it doesn't return a single document because this is just inaccurate logic. So let's revert back to the way it was. I'm just going to bring the should back there and uh, turn this back to the room is E3. And let's put a should clause that makes a little bit more sense, okay? And now just to see the actual data, I'm just going to remove this condition completely for a second. And let's just get all of the accounting courses that are not taught by Bill. So there's just two of them. We've got Accounting 101 and uh, this Tax Accounting. They're both taught in different rooms, E3 and E7. So I can have the should clause and say that the room is, uh, you know, it should be E7. Okay, and if I add a minimum should match one, that's going to only return this document. Okay, so let's hit play and notice that it's only returning the, the tax accounting course 200 with E7. If I get rid of this minimum should criteria and just have a should, which is saying, hey, you know, it would be nice to have uh, E7, then of course, you know, that's the, it's returning both. E7 is there as well as E3. So play around with these conditions. I know it can get a little confusing, uh, but the only way to get around this is to practice. When I was implementing Elasticsearch, you know, in production, uh, it took me a couple of months to get my head around this entire syntax. Uh, of course, I wasn't studying it as much as I should have back then, but I've been using it for a while, so I'm pretty well-versed with this query syntax. So make sure you're putting in a lot of time to get the practice. Learn this query syntax. It's very important. The must must not should inside of the bool that is inside of the query. This is the overall DSL structure. We can't change this, right? If I change this to should not, this property doesn't even exist. For example, if I play, it's going to say, hey, what is, what is should not? It doesn't exist, and thank God it doesn't. So Elasticsearch has these defined parameters. So you just go through the uh, DSL and practice these different uh, query parameters and the structure of this query DSL, okay? So let's hit play so, so we can get that other document again. The next thing we're going to talk about is something called a multi-match query. It has its own, uh, you know, properties. So inside of, we of course need the query, and inside of this query, is, it, we're going to put the multi-match clause. So it goes like this, multi-match, and this is, of course, going to also be, you know, everything is JSON. So in here, we specify the uh, search criteria that we want to search over multiple fields, okay? So we specify the fields that we want to search over. And this, of course, needs to be in quotations, right? Let's get rid of the extra quotes there. Uh, this fields clause is actually going to contain a list of fields that we want to search over. 
So let's say we want to search over the course name and the professor, uh, for the professor's uh, department. So we can do professor dot department, right? And then we specify what we want to search in these fields. And that goes into this clause called query. And we specify the, the string that we want to search for. So let's just search for the accounting string. So this means that this word accounting should exist in either the name field or the professor dot department field. And if it contains, if this word is uh, contained in both of those fields, then that of course, that document is gonna have a higher relevance, right? So let's hit play. And this will give us uh, those professors that work in the accounting department and that have a course that with a with the word accounting in the title. And it doesn't need to be a must for both of these fields. As long as one of these fields has this accounting term in it, whether it's name or whether it's uh, you know the department of the professor, that document is going to be returned. And the documents that contain the word accounting in both of these fields, such as name and professor.department, those are going to be scored higher, right? They're going to be more relevant. For example, the first document here, Accounting Info Systems, it has accounting in the title, and guess what? The department for the professor is also accounting. So look at the score here, 1.2. It's uh, the, And you can see the max score for all the hits is, in fact, this particular score. So it's sorted uh, based on score. The highest one is on top, highest document. Now going to the next document, we've got Cost Accounting. And this is also pretty high up. Uh, you know, it's almost a one in terms of scoring and notice the department is accounting. Keep going down and this is the accounting course 101, but the finance, you know, the department is finance. So this has a lower score and then keep going down. The lowest score here is uh, is this document uh, with uh, the, the department finance and the word accounting in it, right? So uh, notice that tax accounting 200 is a long uh, phrase. Whereas this accounting 101 is not as long of a phrase. So the word accounting has more significance. It takes up more space in this field than the word accounting in this field. So this has slightly more significance than this one. That's why this is slightly more relevant. But of course, the most relevant documents are going to be those that contain the word accounting in both the name field as well as the professor dot department field, as you can see above. Okay. So we went over multi-match. There are other types of uh, properties like these. Like, for example, there's something called a match phrase. So let me put that here, match phrase. And here we can get rid of this. We don't need that. The match phrase is going to match an, an, a, a, a sentence or a part of a sentence. So, for example, we can say match phrase uh, for course description. All right? And the course description better contain a phrase. And what is that phrase? You know, we could just pick any old uh, phrase here. So for example, let me just pick one of these uh, phrases. So here, from the business school taken by uh, final year up to this point. Let's just copy that and put that in the course description. So now, if I run this, it should only return me this document with the ID 6. So let's hit play. And there we go. The hits, total hits is just 1. And the ID of the document is 6. And uh, notice that's what uh, the description contained this particular phrase. Now, if I cut this short, all right, and uh, break a token, like for example, the word final is considered a token, but if I break into that token and just say fin, this query is no longer going to match. Let's hit play and notice it's not working. The reason is because this match phrase uh, takes each one of these as tokens, all right, and searches for them in the documents. So this fin is not really a complete token. Final was, but you know this doesn't understand it. So instead of match phrase, we could use something called match phrase underscore prefix. As you can see, it actually gives that uh, suggestion. This tool is very handy. So now let's hit play, and there you go. Now it's actually bringing up the same department. So uh, it, partial tokens can be figured out using the match uh, phrase prefix. If we just use match phrase, we need to make sure that the token is is complete. The entire sentence doesn't need to be complete, but uh, you know you can't have partial words missing like that. All right. So that's match phrase and match phrase prefix for you. Let's continue on. There's also something called a range query. All right. If we want to 
uh, search for documents that are, you know, that exist in a bit within a given range. Uh, so, for example, let me get rid of this match phrase. Inside of the query, uh, we can give something called range. And then inside of the range, we need to specify the field that we want to do a range query on. And that's going to be, you know, for example, we have student enrollment numbers, right? Students enrolled in each course. For this one, it's 31, but other courses have more or less students in there. So I could just say, you know, student enrolled and uh, pick, you know, greater than 10 and less than or equal to 20. That's what this GTH, uh, excuse me, GTE means. Uh, this stands for greater than or equal to 10. Uh, and then it goes up to uh, 20, which is less than or equal to. So this is a range that includes the numbers 20 and, uh, excuse me, 10 and 20. So let's hit play. And there you go. This is going to show four documents. All of these have student enrolled 19, 17, 13, 18, basically anything between 10 and 20. Let me change this to 30 and hit play. And notice we get a total of six documents returned now. Uh, and there are, you know, students that are, you know, for example, this course, Accounting 101, has 27 students. Uh, this one has 22 students and so on. So you can play around with these ranges. This is greater than or equal to. Uh, there is also greater than, right, uh, which is just GT and less than LT. Okay, this is also, if you don't want to include the range, uh, such as 10 and 30, it's only going to check for greater than 10 and less than 30. Okay. So let's hit play, and that's, you know, it's for, for this situation, it's still going to return a total of six documents because we don't have these uh, numbers 10 and 30. But for example, if I say greater than 19, let me change that here, 19, and less than, um, you know, 27, right, then this document with the ID uh, 1, this document above with the ID uh, 8 are not going to be part of the result. So let's hit play. And notice it's only returning a total of one hit. Student enrollment is only 22 here. So just like we're doing a range here on a numeric field, such as students enrolled, we can do ranges on, uh, you know, dates. For example, course published date. There's another field you can do ranges on and it works almost pretty much you know exactly the same way as it's working here we just specify the given date so let's let's try that we could do course publish date and we could say greater than um, let's just give an arbitrary date 2013 08 and I'm just going to give the same exact date that I see here 27 and we don't need to have this less than criteria we could just say just greater than anything greater than this date. So let's hit play. And this is going to give uh, courses that are more recent, right, more recent than this date. So take a look here. Uh, we got 2014, 2016, 2016, and, and so on, right, 2015, and 2014, 2015, okay? So this is greater than. But if I do greater than or equal to, that's going to include this date as well, the course that was published on that date. And hit play and there you go let's go scroll down to find that course with that date and that's this guy right here okay where this can get quite complex is when you're uh, combining these queries right we talked about the range query the minimum uh, should and must and must not uh, you can actually combine all of these queries together and put these inside of other you know musts and shoulds and so on and that can make uh, things kind of complex. But if you look at the structure as sort of a, a tree, you'll come to realize that it's somewhat simple. We've got query, and in, inside of the query, we can have other kinds of queries, and, and those could further have other kinds of queries. So let me go over an example that will make more sense. Let's get rid of this, and let's specify a query that is going to be a bool query, and inside of bool, We'll have a bunch of, uh, you know, we'll, we'll have musts and should and so on. So we could say must give the array. And inside of this, we can say must match the name of the course with accounting. And close that bracket there. 
So that's our must clause. And then after must, we can have a must not as well. So let's do that, must not. And inside of the must not, we could say, you know, it must not match room E7, for example. And this, of course, needs to be wrapped into curly braces as well. And then finally, we could do a should. All right, let's make this should a little bit more complex. We just looked at range, so let's do this. Range over a given field, we'll say, you know, we'll do student enrolled. And I'm not even sure if this is going to return a result, and we'll, we'll inspect the documents that are returned here for this query. Uh, we could do GTE greater than or equal to uh, 10 students and less than or equal to uh, 20 students. So that's all part of, you know, this is all part of the should. So we've got a range inside of the should. Like I said, you can combine these queries. You could put queries within queries. So we can have a range query inside of a should. We can have other types of queries that we went, mentioned so far in this lesson inside of these, uh, you know, musts and must not and should and so on. And we've got an error. And the reason for that is because inside of the should, uh, you know, like you see, like you see here, must not and must uh, have this, uh, you know, these curly braces, and within there are all the queries, the match queries. So within this should, this range query better also be wrapped into this, uh, into these curly braces. I think that's it. So let's hit play and let's see what happens. And it looks like it did not parse. So sometimes you want to. Uh, test whether this is valid JSON, All right? And it looks like it might not be. So let's just copy and uh, paste this into a JSON editor. And you can Google this. Uh, let's just try JSON lint. I think I've used this one before. So click that, and then let's try this one right here. So paste your JSON here, and click on validate, and notice that we've got an error. And it shows exactly what the error is. Notice in the match, uh, for the must not, we have the room, but we're not, we don't have the colon after that. So let's add that colon and validate just JSON, and now it's working. So this tool is pretty handy. Just use any old JSON editor online. You can Google for it. I use JSON lint. It's very easy to use. So uh, we figured out our problem. It's this guy right here, room. Let's add the colon, and that should make things work. And there you go, All right? So notice the course name is accounting. Right, it contains that, and it's taught in E3. It's not E7. Remember, must not, uh, sh it must not be E7. So E3 here, so far, we're so good. And then the the range for the student enrolled, it better be between 10 and 20. And here we are. This is 19. And let's go down. This is also taught in E3. And um, students enrolled, the range is 27. Right. So notice this should. This is just a should. It's great to have. This document is still showing. So what is more relevant here? The first document, because it's accounting for the should clause here, students enrolled 19. You know, that's the ideal situation. So the relevance for this document is higher. But should is not an enforcement, it's just an ideal situation. So the second document here does not fall within this range. So it's, uh, you know, shown as lower in terms of relevance for what we are looking for, okay? So shoulds are very useful for ordering relevance. So this document above is more relevant for our search criteria. Now, if we wanted to make this should a must, right, if we want to make this should a must, what would we have to do? Take a moment to try that out on your own. Take this as an assignment. Um, modify this JSON structure so that the, you know, you can add that particular attribute to this JSON so that the should becomes a must. So try that out, pause the video now, and then you can resume to watch my solution. All right, welcome back. Hopefully you took a, a shot at completing that. It shouldn't have been too hard. Um, inside of the bool clause, just put a comma and put minimum should match. Right? Let's just get minimum should match and just put that one there. And now that's going to target only uh, those documents that are within this student enrollment range, which is 10 to 20, along with these two, right? These must also be true. So let's hit play, and there you go. The total documents return is just one, and it's that document with the 19 students. All right, so we worked through a lot of examples 
delving into the query syntax, the, the query DSL. So this lesson, as well as the one before it, is quite comprehensive. So go through these topics to master this query DSL before moving to the next lesson. Remember, like I said, Elasticsearch has two major query components uh, for the search DSL. One of the query components is the query, right, which we've been talking about throughout the last, you know, this lesson as well as the last one. The other major component is the filter, which we have yet to look at. And I'm going to introduce that to you in the next lesson. So let's wrap up this section. I will see you in the next lecture. Thanks for watching.